Determine whether the uh, definite integral from minus 2 to 1 of 1 over x squared dx converges. So this might look like it's a very straightforward problem, something that we can do. So let me present a solution that might be the natural thing to try, but it's actually a wrong solution. So first, we're going to look at a wrong solution. We're going to then talk about how we know it's a wrong solution, and then we'll end up providing a correct solution to this problem. So the wrong solution to this problem is just to say what's the antiderivative 1 over x squared. That's x to the minus 2. Antiderivative would be minus x to the, to the minus 1. Plug in minus 2 and 1. And when we plug in 1, we get minus 1. And when we plug in uh, minus 2, we get minus 1 over minus 2. And combining this together, keeping track of all the negative signs, we get minus 3 halves. So a wrong solution would be just showing this much work and saying it's minus 3 halves. But if we think about this carefully, that's a nonsensical answer. It's just, uh, it's just other nonsense. How can we tell that? Well, let's uh, sketch the function that we're thinking about. So our function is 1 over x squared. So this is what our function 1 over x squared looks like. It has vertical asymptotes as we approach x is equal to 0. And so we're looking for the antiderivative from minus 2 to 1. That's the area under the curve between minus 2 and 1. So we're looking for this area here. But realize that this area is completely above the x-axis. Our function isn't negative, our function is positive. We're integrating something positive. How are we getting a negative answer? So that shows that our negative 3 half answer is just other nonsense. So what do we have to do? Well, let's just go back to realizing what's, what's causing us trouble here with our four types of improper integrals. We're finally into this fourth case, where f of x has a vertical asymptote at x is equal to c. x is equal to 0 in this case, where 0 is between our endpoints of minus 2 and 1. So in order to, to uh, deal with this, what do we have to do? We have to break our original integral up into two parts and look at them separately. So the uh, integral from minus 2 to 1 of 1 over x squared dx is the integral from minus 2 to 0. Let me rewrite that as x to the minus 2 plus the integral from 0 to 1, x to the minus 2 dx. So we're going to break it at the trouble spot. We're breaking our integral, breaking the bounds right here. And so now we're going to look at each of these two improper integrals separately. So we'll call this A. We'll call this B. If either of these integrals diverges, the overall integral diverges, if they both converge and we get finite answers for them, then we just simply add together our two finite answers to get the overall uh, answer to our original problem. So let's start off by looking at a. So the we are integrating minus 2 to 0, x to the minus 2, dx. So we should replace this 0 with some variable. The limit, uh, I'll, I'll use a here. And we're taking the limit as a goes to 0, x to the minus 2, dx. Now actually, we want to be a little bit careful here. Limit as a goes to 0. So we're looking at this integral. It's not just a is going to 0. We're thinking particularly when a is going to 0 uh, from the left. So we're thinking of a as a negative number that is really close to 0. Okay, so let's find that antiderivative. Uh, once again, it's going to be 1 minus 1 over x. Plug in minus 2 and a. So again, we get the limit as a goes to 0 from the left of 
minus 1 over a, and then plus 1 half. Okay, what, what is this limit here? Well, 1 half, that's, that's fine. That's just staying as 1 half. But then this limit is going off. This limit is going off to infinity. So a is a negative number that's close to 0. And so 1 over that, we're going off to infinity. And because we have a is negative and there's a negative sign there, those two negatives mean that this overall answer here is positive infinity. And so our conclusion is that our overall limit from minus 2 to 1 of 1 over x squared dx, we can conclude that this diverges. So in order for this, in, this integral to converge, both of these would have to converge. As soon as we see that one of them diverges, we are done. Uh, if you want to, it's, it's good practice to see if you can work out this one by yourself and realize that that one also uh, diverges. That's a good practice uh, to do here. But we just have to check one of them so we know overall this diverges. So what's the moral of the story here? If you have and interior asymptotes, some place where, the, where things break in the middle, you have to break the bounds into two separate intervals and then take a look at each, two, each uh, interval separately there.